When most people think about fairies, they think about Tinkerbell. But this Irish fairy doesn't wear pink. The Banshee comes from the Irish for woman, which is Ban, and She, which means fairy, is an attendant fairy that follows the old families and none but them, and wails before a death. Many have seen her as she goes wailing and clapping her hands. The Keen, or Quina, the funeral cry of the peasantry, is said to be an imitation of her cry, when more than one Banshee is present, and they will wail and sing in chorus. It is for the death of some holy or great one. So I'm going to play you a recording I made uh, 30 years ago of my late grandmother and her recollection of hearing the Banshee as she walked on a lonely country road in County Wicklow, probably in the 1920s. And it's worth adding that she was a, a very good Christian and a very sober lady, uh, but was steeped in the traditions of the Irish country people. And God bless us, I can hear the banshees still. But then I came home and told Aunt Mary Ann about it. And she said that Davey Edge was very bad last night and that the banshee almost spotted the edge. And it was noted. I learned she'll terrify Jesus any more than the Smith's Wood, I heard it. There was a wood down away from Grove Hall, the peach gentleman's place. And she always wanted to snare us, and he died that night. Davy, a genuine. Was he an old man? Oh, no, I suppose a man at 30 years of age or 35. Gosh. He was old to me, like that time. So there's another chilling account written in 1752, uh, witnessed by three people, uh, a lady, her mother, and the coach driver called Leary. This journey was by coach over bad winter roads. They wanted to visit a man called Charles McCarthy, a young 26-year-old who had been injured in a shooting accident. My mother had scarcely spoken these words when a shriek that made us thrill as if our very hearts were pierced by it, burst from the hedge to the right of our way. If it resembled anything earthly, it seemed the cry of a female, struck by a sudden and mortal blow, and giving out her life in one long deep pang of expiring agony. We saw nothing. The moon was hid. It was quite dark, and we had been for some time expecting a heavy fall of rain. But just as Leary had spoken, and had succeeded in making the horse trot briskly forward, we distinctly heard a loud clapping of hands, followed by a succession of screams that seemed to denote the last excess of despair and anguish, and to issue from a person running forward inside the hedge to keep pace with our progress. Still, we saw nothing. The moon started suddenly from behind a cloud and enabled us to see, as plainly now as I see this paper, the figure of a tall, thin woman with uncovered head and long hair that floated around her shoulders, attired in something which seemed either a loose white cloak or a sheet thrown hastily about her. She stood at the corner hedge, her left hand pointing to this place, her right arm waving rapidly and violently as if to draw us in that direction. The horse had stopped, apparently frightened at the sudden presence of the figure which stood in the manner I have described, uttering the same piercing cries for about half a minute. It then leapt upon the road, disappeared from our view, and the next was seen standing upon a high wall a little way up the avenue. Go on, Leary, to Spring House, in God's name, said my mother. Whatever world it belongs to, we will provoke it no longer. Tis a banshee, ma'am, said Leary, and I would not, for what my life is worth, go anywhere else this blessed night but to Spring House, but I'm afraid there's something bad going forward, but she would not send us there. When they arrived at Spring House, young Master McCarthy had passed away from his wounds. There are reports that the folklore of the Banshee has even crossed the Atlantic 
In the wake of millions of Irish immigrants who settled in the United States, the descendants of one Irish family, Boston businessman James O'Barry, heard her wail on more than one occasion. The last time was as he sat up in bed reading the newspaper in his hotel room in Toronto during a business trip. He feared it signaled the death of his wife or his young son or his brother, but he was strangely reassured that it was none of them. Only later that day, 22nd of November, 1963, did he hear about the assassination in Dallas, Texas of a close family friend, President John F. Kennedy. The concept of the harbinger of death is common in many cultures, and for example, such cries have often been heard before great battles. But the Irish banshee remains one of the more popular fairies in Irish folklore. Thank you for watching, but please like and subscribe, as this will encourage future productions.